everyone. So this talk is a little hard for me to give. I actually, the first time I gave it was to college students the week of the inauguration this year. So it's been, it's been a bit of a, a, bit of a struggle every time I've given it. But it's important, it's super important that we talk about this and like understand how responsible we are for the things that we're creating and the effects that they're having on people. And so once upon a time, in a faraway land, I thought this contrast would be better on the screen, and it was not. But that slide just says once upon a time if you can't read it. You're not missing anything critical. There was a farm in Kansas. It looked probably exactly like this. I don't know. I've actually never been to Kansas. But this farm was uh, about a mile away from a neighbor, like another house with humans, and about 12,000 miles away from a major city with a huge grocery store, you know, a hospital, all those kinds of things. Um, it's about 360 acres, which is huge. That's a lot of land. Uh, like most lots in Portland are not even a third of an acre. So just to give you a little scale. Um, this farm has been in the family for decades. But in the last 15 years, they've just been beset by constant, constant problems. Law enforcement raiding their house, looking for homicidal or suicidal people. Bomb threats, death threats, random packages. All sorts of weird things were happening to this house and nobody could figure out why until some random reporter figured this out. And this story might sound familiar to some of you. It was kind of a big deal in the last year or so. But basically what happened was IP mapping. There's this huge company called MaxMind and they actually sell their IP mapping services to over 5,000 businesses internationally. What IP mapping does, and this is the boring part of the talk, is it pinpoints your location down to as close as your house, your block, your city, your county, your state, et cetera, et cetera. It gets larger and larger. Generally, they can narrow it down to country at best. That's a lot, you know, there's a big, we live in a big country. Smaller countries, not such a big issue. But in the US, turns out that's total garbage. It's huge. And that's not good enough for companies that want to buy your data and advertise things to you so that they can sell you winter boots in winter where you live and not winter boots in summer. Like, that's just dumb. Don't do that. It's bad marketing. Pro tip from me, professional marketer. Um, so IP mapping, it turns out, is just kind of like a lot of guessing and a lot of, like, best effort, but best effort for bad purposes. And basically, this company decided for the United States, they wanted to use the middle, the geographic middle of the US to determine default location. This is the geographic middle of the United States. Da -da -da. Uh, that's Kansas. I covered it up with the long coordinates, but that's the coordinate for the smack middle of the United States. It's also a really ugly number. So <laughs> for humans, the, the prettiness of things matters. Like, how many of us have stopped using a product because the UI was really ugly and awful? This is why we pay our designers. Anyways, the point is, MaxMind didn't like this. It was kind of tedious and awful. So they decided, we're just going to round it. It'll be fine. It's cool. Nobody thought to look on a map. That actually moved the marker two hours away to the front of the driveway of this farm. Not like the middle of the field that they don't use, or even the middle of a field that they do use that the sheep are hanging out in. This was their driveway. Like if you looked up their house on Google Earth and did Earth View, this was the spot. Like, nobody checked! Nobody checked! They just changed it! I'm dying! So, in the world, there are 7 billion people. But for the IPv4 spec, there are only 4.2 billion IP addresses. And if you had to guess, just guess, how many of those US-based IP addresses were assigned to that default location, would you guess 600 million? Because that's how many. It's approximately 14%. Uh, just to give you an idea, that's almost the entire population of New York City, plus many other very large cities. There's a lot of people. Or maybe New York City is 800. I don't know. It's a lot of people. And so it turned out, 15 years of this harassment, they finally figure out it's because some idiot at some company decided to round, and not even round well, round incorrectly. They didn't even embrace the principles of math when they rounded. I was like so upset about this. I was trying to figure it out. Anyways, but could you imagine? Because of something that was randomly assigned to you by some random company somewhere, you're being harassed. 
And even one day, a random toilet with a bomb in it is in your driveway for funsies, right? Like, because of your IP address. Like, this is so terrible. You have law enforcement regularly coming into your house to the point where the local sheriff is actually now your best friend because he's like, yo, these people are legit. They're not kidnapping people. Seriously, though? Because of an ugly number. Like, a lot of numbers in life are ugly, but changing them to be a little bit more human readable, I don't think has ever caused anybody as much trouble as this one terrible incident of rounding has done. And so these people were completely and totally, totally powerless. There was nothing they could do in this scenario for 15 years. Things were coming at them from all sides, and they just had no idea why. Who do you go to? Like, if your internet's down, you call CenturyLink, and you're like, uh, I work remotely, my internet's down, I'm not going to go to the co-working space. But what if they don't fix it? What if they stop answering your calls? What if you never can get internet ever again? Like, that's a pretty pithy analogy, but in that scenario, you've exercised all the avenues that you know of. Like, what are you going to do? Go to your representative in Congress because you don't have internet? Like, what are these people going to do? Go to their representative because there's a toilet in their driveway? Like, there's nothing. It's faceless. So there's nobody you can talk to. And as a result, it's important to remember that sometimes the things we build actively harm people. And I don't think a lot of us do this on purpose. I'd like to think that most of us here are good people. But... Why is this happening? Why are we doing this? Is it on purpose? Is it on accident? Is it because of money? Maybe all of it. Probably all of it. Because money is good. It pays for this cute sloth fabric. Um, but really where it gets us is we just are kids in a candy store when it comes to technology. Like it's so cool. We can do so many things with it. It's so powerful. It's in every part of our lives now. Education, finance, even medicine, which for better or for worse, mostly for worse for Elizabeth Holmes, when she defrauded the entire United States government and multiple investors to get a $9 billion valuation when she had no technology that worked and is now actually being sued by multiple states. She basically used fancy marketing and a bunch of very gullible investors to dupe people out of $9 billion. <laughs> More than that, actually. But now she's riddled to nothing. She has no reputation to fall back on now that they found out all of her science was faked. None of the scientists of that company, none of the engineers, none of the employees thought to say, hey, those weren't actually my results. Don't falsify my data. Nobody stood up and said anything. And if they did, they were probably fired. And so, like, there's definitely a risk. But, like, this is so shady. This is, like, so much power in one person's hands. And technology also helps us erase people. Like, I mean, I don't know how many things I do online, but, like, I'm friends with my UPS driver now because I order so much stuff from Amazon. He brought me cake for my birthday. That's how good of a friend I am with my UPS driver. That's how much I order from Amazon. Okay, so it erases people, <laughs> obviously. But there's also the convenience factor of technology companies like Blue Apron that provide meal planning services. They actually, and I don't expect you to read this because I'm going to read it to you, they actually racked up more fines in three years in the food preparation industry than any, any other manufacturer in California in its entire history with OSHA regulating these fines. They also had two weapons calls where employees brought guns to work and threatened coworkers. They had three employees who brought or threatened to bring bombs to work. They had seven assaults, physical assaults happen where law enforcement was called. And actually there was a bomb threat going on when OSHA was out there about these meetings for the $11,000 and $13,000 fines. So have fun with your prepackaged meal and I hope you enjoy the IPO. Technology is also super frivolous because it's getting to be super expensive. I give Amazon, apparently I'm an Amazon commercial today, I give them 66 cents a month for all of my hosting, for all of the silly projects I have on the internet. 66 cents, that's like nothing. But when I was a kid, it was prohibitively expensive to host anything on the internet, even if it was just a static site. And so you get dumbasses like this dude who made a company that would ship you $20 worth of quarters for $27. So you didn't have to leave your house to talk to anybody. And like he was ridiculed, but like this was a legit business. They made money. They shut down because apparently there's something vaguely like weird about selling money for more money. And like uh, they couldn't do that. But like 
someone was like, this is a good idea. This is a good use of my time, resources, and energy. This is so frivolous. I just like, you can't. I'm rolling my eyes so hard. But technology is also super dangerous because we don't have, there's no regulation. And like, there's, that's a whole separate talk, but like, as is Uber, a whole separate talk. But before Uber was known for all the terrible stuff they've been known for in the last year, they were also known for secretly tracking celebrities and politicians. They were also known for determining from your ride data if you had taken a one-night stand and writing blog posts about it with charts and graphs and statistical likelihoods of the age and sex of the participants in these one-night stands. So, like, nobody at Uber was like, this is a bad idea, and maybe if they said that, they got fired. So much danger and so much power and so much irresponsible use of your data. And so... It's so cool that we can build awesome things super fast. It's also cool that we can build stupid things. Like, I built a puppy gachi because I wanted to remake a tamagachi. Like, that's stupid, but it's not going to hurt anybody. It's a puppy gachi. But the problem is when we build the things that hurt people, that break people, that cause problems to their lives, when we make decisions like... I'm going to order from Blue Apron instead of go to the grocery store and continue to give money to a company that treats its workers worse than Amazon treats its warehouse workers. Like, you're making a choice there that's fueling the market and like, oh my god, it is so exhausting to have to make these choices all the time. I'm not saying you have to do this with everybody, but like, when you are building a thing, when you're participating in designing a thing, think about how it can be used in the worst way possible. And like, this is so terrifying and upsetting to do because you're like, okay, how could somebody use this to do a terrible thing? And nobody wants to think like that all the time. But somebody has to, because somebody's going to. And so you have to think about these really, really, really hard questions. The only important thing on here is hard questions. I really, you know, I just really like teal. <laughs> That's teal for folks who can't see the teal. It's teal. It's pretty great. Um, but we need to understand our social responsibility, and that's kind of what these hard questions are for, is when things go wrong, who is held accountable? I don't know how many of you heard about the Volkswagen engineer who got jail time and like something like $200,000 worth of fines for his participation in masking the test results for the vehicles. His argument in court was he was just doing what his supervisors told him to. Do you want to go to jail for the product that you built that your manager told you to build? I sure shit don't. Like, I don't make enough money for that. Are, are we actually consuming technology responsibly? Do we need to save every single tweet we've ever had? Is that a responsible use of server space, of energy to run those servers, of your psychological wounds of looking at a 10-year-old tweet and realizing you're old? <laughs> it happened to me the other day. I've been on Twitter for 10 years, okay? Um, and are we using things that are produced ethically? Are they treating their employees fairly, or is their technology doing something that is unethical, like data mining? And are we, as individuals, creating things that are also ethical? This question, like, ethics is a whole field of study, and it should be, because it's hard. But this is something that maybe, like, I don't know, think about. I've worked for companies that were responsible for aggregating customer data, and I always kind of wondered, did we have access to more than I thought we did? We did. So... That boils down to when do you get held accountable? When as an individual are you responsible? Is it ever now? Or is it only when you get in trouble? I kind of feel responsible all the time because, I mean, to be fair, I wrote this talk and like I think about it all the time, but when is it really? Are you responsible when someone finally gets hurt? Or are you responsible just because you did something that could hurt someone? It's, it's a lot. It's too much. It's hard to think about. And data mining and privacy are huge topics, and like the consent with what you do with your data are also huge topics. But I just want to put out there, like, do you really need all that data? Do you need someone's birthday in order to like let them buy something on your website? Probably not. You fundamentally need a method of payment and a place to deliver it to, and that's it. You don't need anything else. Anything else you collect is just to appease the marketing gods. Like, let it go. Let people maintain some of their privacy with their data. And so we have an impact. And what we do is not isolated to ourselves, and this is not something that is difficult for people to understand. If you take up more seat space on the airplane than you are allotted, and you squish the tiny woman next to you, that impacts them. It might also impact the person next to them. It might also impact the flight attendant who somebody yells at because now they're grouchy because they're smushed between two smelly people. 
What you do impacts others. This is, this is common sense. We know this. <clears throat> but really, how big can the impact of one tiny action be? And I remind you of the toilet and the farm and the bad rounding. That was one small decision, one small action, and it destroyed the lives of that family for 15 years. And the property value, which is like not that important, but just a note, economic impact matters too. And so things have different levels of impact. You can maybe have impact on the world level or just a country or community. Most of us regularly have impact with family and friends and we all have direct impact with what we do ourselves with our lives. But like, where does your work fall on this scale? I think my work is like neatly in the community area. I don't think I'm really like doing anything that's impacting my country, but maybe you are. And the levels of questions you have to ask get bigger and get harder as you go further and further up. And thinking about what impact you want your work to have, I want people to like be happy when they use stuff I've made. I want the things to be easier for them. And sometimes that happens and sometimes that doesn't, but <clears throat> When you're talking about your work versus you, it becomes a little less personal and you feel a little bit more removed from it because like my work is fundamentally I'm selling my labor for cash so I can feed my dog uh, and buy sloth fabric. But my work is an extension of me and I have to think about it like that to remember that the impact I have is about my work, not just about me and how I feel about myself. And so one tiny decision can have many ramifications. I feel like I should have updated these slides uh, this week instead of turning them in on Wednesday. I should have turned them in on Thursday. Uh, Twitter, some of you may have heard, suspended, deleted uh, the president's account for 11 minutes Thursday evening. A single departing customer service employee apparently took it upon themselves to either demonstrate Twitter's complete and total lack of security around accessing user accounts or to make a political statement. Um, but before that, they also had a really terrible block policy that replaced a really, not really, but pretty decent block policy. They are making choices that are impacting people's lives every day. They're impacting people's safety, and today they even made more decisions to suspend additional accounts. And they're making these decisions on the face of it being a product decision, but ultimately it is a business decision because every product decision is a business decision. When you make a decision to open up your platform for abuse and allow this kind of behavior to continue, you're making a statement and you're having an impact on people's lives by letting them be subjected to something that you could stop. There's no reason other than financial and some lofty argument that they've propped up on their little high horse that's preventing them from actually fixing the abuse problem they have. This is like fucking technology. Are you telling me you can't fix this abuse problem? That's too, it's too hard. I don't, I don't buy that for a second. I don't buy that fixing that is too hard. It's a business choice. They're making a monetarily motivated choice. And in this scenario, I'm not saying as an engineer or designer or someone who works in customer support or somebody who works adjacent to tech, I'm not saying you need to go in and be like, no, we are not doing this. I'm not saying that it pits you against the business and against profitability. What I am saying is sometimes the business forgets about the people and sometimes what they need is just the reminder of the people. And this is a little like, rosy sunshine perspective because honestly probably they don't care about the people they care about the money that people give them but I don't want you to approach this as if I think about the thing we're doing as bad and I tell them it's bad that means I'm against the business I don't support the business I don't support what we do that's not what it, that's not what it's about you can't absolve yourselves yourself yourselves I guess it's the plural I really had to think about that one for a minute. We as a whole cannot absolve ourselves of that responsibility just because we don't make decisions. That Volkswagen engineer is going to have a lovely time in prison, I'm sure, even though he didn't make the decision. You, as an individual, have some amount of privilege. If you have none, then that's fine. If you have a ton, like I feel like I do in my role, I am very loud and angry all the time. 
and I voice my opinions all the time, and I am happy to voice someone else's if they don't feel comfortable. If you don't make the decision, you can still talk about the decision. Like Kara suggested earlier, you can tell a story to position where you would like someone to go. Use that social engineering to your advantage. And we ultimately need to be responsible for the things we create, but we also need to feel responsible. We need to care a little bit, and it's like emotional labor, and it's terrible. But if you're building things for people, shouldn't you care about people? Just floating that one. Just floating that one. So when your impact meets responsibility, it can be really difficult. If you have something that impacts on a really, really high level, who do you hold responsible? Like with Uber, their CEO's gone, but like obviously it was a toxic management issue and many other problems. Do you gut the entire company and start from scratch with just the software? No, you can't do that. The only time this works out in your favor when something is a high profile incident, like has recently been happening in the news with all of the allegations coming up, it has real ramifications. It's real catastrophic and public opinion sways to the side of the people who are being harmed. So the larger the impact, the larger the consequences. You could lose the company, as some people have in recent days. You could lose a job. You could become financially destitute. You could lose everything you have. You never know. It really depends. <coughs> Excuse me. So what do you do? I've just given you all this like downer of like, okay, you make things that are probably bad, maybe don't, speak up, etc. cetera. Um, so what do you actually do? What's tangible stuff you can do? Understand why you're building the thing. Know who it's for, know its purpose. Learn more about the business so you don't accidentally make a decision that hurts your customers. If your business is about providing a service, make sure that you understand both the people who provide the service and use the service, not just the intermediary layer. Collaborate with the team and not just the people that you sit next to. Talk to product, talk to sales, talk to folks, make some friends. Make a pal. The more people you know, the more people who are likely to stand up and with you when you say, this is fucked, and take your side. Think about the resources you're using. Make sure you're using them responsibly. Maybe next time somebody asks you, hey, can we just get their date of birth and social security number for funsies? Be like, mm -mm, no, maybe not. Talk to your colleagues about what you're building and see how they feel about it too. Temperature gauge. Be inquisitive. Ask questions. It's how you learn anyways. So it's a win-win, right? See, I ended on a happy thing. <laughs> I ended on a win-win. But no, seriously, I know this is a hard thing to think about and nobody wants to be like, the stuff I do is hurting people. And for all I know, we all make wonderful things that don't hurt people. But it is important to at least ask those questions and if you personally can't, find someone who can.